Should be working. What is going on, everybody? Hopefully, we have a actually generating. Oh, look, look who it is. Look who it is. Come on, buddy. This is my dog, Zeke, and I am on kid control tonight. He's hanging out in the shop with us as we talk about motorcycles. My name is Cody Richards. I am a Honda motorcycle technician for a very well-known shop in Norfolk, Virginia. I've been around for about 50 years now, um, and I specialize in Honda motorcycles. Also on Monday nights, I do a live Q&A where I go over questions from my subscriber list. If you want to be a subscriber, MotorcycleMD.com, subscribe there. And we talk about motorcycles, man, every, usually every Monday. That's usually when we do it. This week, it's been nuts and it didn't work so but there's an update now and I guess you can do some cool new things with YouTube as far as sharing goes but welcome we got a bunch of new subscribers this past week all thanks to an awesome guy over at For The Bold his channel he does cafe racers um, seems like a really stand up guy honestly he's working on some CX500 stuff and um, he gave me a shout out and I was super humbled by that I never even knew who he was or his channel at all. Woke up one morning and I found that he had given me an email and I thank you, um, but huge shout out to him. So a bunch of new subscribers, welcome you guys. Typically I'm not always doing live Q and A's. Lately it's just been live Q and A's because I'm building up content um, for a couple of different things, for the website, for uh, carb cleaning stuff and um, yeah, it's winter. It's winter here in Norfolk, Virginia. So tonight, what I want to do is go over some really, really cool tricks um, when it comes to cleaning carburetors. What's going on, Dean? And I'm going to pull up on my laptop the same exact channel because after I go through the, the tips that I want to give you guys, I'm going to go through some questions, obviously. Then after that, maybe leave the floor open for some conversation as far as a question that you have right off the top of your head, anything like that. Um, Bellamy, hey, speaking of videos, did you ever post anything from Gentleman's Ride? No, man. I, I have footage from that, man, and it's, and it's pretty cool, but I haven't. I've just been so consumed with work and motorcycle MD, I have not even posted about it yet. Anyways. So I'm going to pull up the live feed on the computer so I can read you guys' comments. On the side, what's going on? The official Tranquil Phoenix. So I guess he's, maybe he's here. Detroit Dizzle, what's going on? Big Burgius. Man, you guys' names are difficult. Your little names. Merry Christmas to all you guys, man. It's going to be an awesome, awesome weekend. Um, so... This week, I think, I think it'll be kind of cool to show you guys the life of a technician, what I work on throughout the week. So this week, a um, customer came in with a roached CT70. If you don't know what that is, look it up. 1970 CT70, they're awesome, awesome little scooters, motorcycles, really. Um, but he gave me full reign, man, to rebuild the, the complete motor because he had a Kickstarter issue with it, so like the Kickstarter would not engage until it was either halfway or, I'm mean, sorry, all the way down and be like blah, blah, right at the end, um, or would not engage at all. Um, CT90, even e even cooler. Um, we actually have a, tra a Trail 110 here at the shop, it's mint, it's pretty cool. But, you see that, it looks pretty awesome. Kickstarter gear inside of the trans, motor has to be split, he said just go ahead and redo everything. So that's what I'm doing currently. I mean, it's it. The exhaust broke, and it's stuck in the head. So that's that's a lot of fun. I don't know if you ever experienced that, but the end goal is to have the whole motor look like this. Okay, this has been media blasted by me, of course, covering up bearings and stuff like that. But he wants he, he wants it to look good. He wants it to run good. So that's what I've been doing this week, going after that kind of stuff, going on eBay, finding new old stock parts and all that. That's a not that that's not very fun to do, honestly. Finding stuff on eBay, I I I do not enjoy that. But 
that's what you gotta do for the old bikes, but we actually do still work on them. So, let's get into some carburetor cleaning stuff, because that's what you guys are probably here for. Welcome everybody who is in the channel. Um, it'll probably take about 45 minutes of your time, maybe even an hour, all, all depends on how the conversation goes. But what I wanna do is talk about tips, that, tricks that I use, knowledge, technique, when it comes to cleaning carbs, because I hear a lot of times people on the internet, on Facebook, on whatever, in groups, hey, I need to clean my carbs, and you got 20 people saying, hey man, it's super easy, go ahead and do it. I, I disagree wholeheartedly with all of that. I, I believe that it, it, it literally takes not just common knowledge, but just the, the drive to want to know what you're doing and the knowledge behind what it is you're actually messing with. Um, and not to like make it seem like it's an impossible task, because it's not. I mean, once you know what you're doing, yes, it is fairly easy. So, so those guys who say, yeah, man, it's super easy. All you need is common knowledge and a service manual. They've done it before. So that's why they, they, they can say that. So it's your first time going in, whatever. Maybe it's your third and you want to learn something new. What I do when I clean carbs, and it's this may seem overcomplicated, but I get what I want out of the carbs to be clean 100% of the time. I've literally had, I don't think I've, I've ever in seven years of working on motorcycles have had a comeback from a poorly done carb job. Maybe the first year or two, um, but, and this is why. Okay, so what I do is you guys have probably seen these little jet cleaners that got like little ribs on them, cool. Awesome. I rarely use them. Um, they're good for like quick, quick stuff, but I rarely use them. What I use, when it comes to the jets that you have inside of your carburetor, okay, there's always going to be a, some kind of a number system, unless you buy like a Chinese Tao Tao scooter and you get aftermarket jets or aftermarket carbon, they don't put any numbers on the jets. I've seen it before. But Honda will always put numbers on their jets, always. So let's say you have a main jet with an emulsion tube attached. I, I, I have some props here to show you guys. So this is a, an emulsification tube with a main jet on top. Okay, so that main jet can come off. That tube is meant to mix air and fuel together so it burns better once it gets into the cylinder. So it's also a portal for something completely different. But so this, this main jet is a 105, 105, okay? So what that means for metric bikes is that the hole should, if you guys have ever, ever heard of a micrometer or something like this, this is actually very, very cheap. This is not a Honda micrometer. I just put stickers on it to make it look really cool, if that looks really cool. But micrometer right here, okay? You don't have to be a rocket science to know how to use these because you can get ones that cheat and tell you exactly what the numbers are on front, okay? Or you can get digital ones. So, long story short, I can take that 105 and that would mic out using, using this and using little, little drill bits like these, okay? Which I've gotten off Amazon. This is nothing crazy that I got from Honda. Same with something like this. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon for like four bucks or something like that. It may not be like 100% down to the thousands, but I don't care. I mean, it, it, it does its purpose and it has for many years. Um, I can take a small drill bit and if I can find one that is a 1.05, that is what the drill bit size to go in that drill into that jet is, okay? And the reason why I do that is because jets are expensive. So when a customer comes in and they say, yeah, I got an 1100 and it's a twin carb and it's, and it's, there's that awesome train that you guys always hear in the videos, but, and I want to get the carbs cleaned on it. And we're like, Hey man, it's going to be about, about this much money, about $400, about 450. The reason why I can narrow it down to that price is because I don't buy jets when I, when I'm re, when I'm, I've, I've rarely ever, ever bought in jets unless someone has been in there before me and royally screwed them up, broken the Phillips head or the flathead tip off of them, um, used a great pair of 
um, vice grips to pull the jets out. It's the only time. Other than that, I can reuse the same jets, re-drill them, and save them probably about 60 bucks on jets from Honda. That's why I do it. Okay, saves you money. It saves me time and waiting period for parts to come in, and it makes the, you happier because you're not spending money. Anyways, so I take drill bits like those, and I will literally just re-drill this hole now. When it comes to like, I don't know what topic this would be. I guess it would be like mechanical engineering or something. But if you have a 105 hole, a 1.05 millimeter hole, and a 1.05 jet, those are not going to fit in nice and smooth and gracefully. Okay? Because it's, it, it's going to be like a press fit. There's very, very, very tiny one hundredths of thousands of space between that jet and that hole. I'm talking about inside of there for that jet to fit. So when I'm using the drill bits, it actually is kind of opening it up a little bit. It's still a 1.05 jet, still a 1.05 drill bit. And what I would do is take a pair of needle nose pliers, take that drill bit that I've mic'd out. This might get really confusing. I'm sorry if it does. But I can mic this drill bit out. And this is reading almost exactly at 105. It's like a little between 105 and 106, which I'm totally happy with because half of a step up is not going to make any difference. I would take it and literally drill that main jet onto that shaft over and over again until I feel it is necessarily clean. Okay? That's cleaning a jet to me. I don't replace them, that's what I do. Idle jet, main jet, secondary jet, whatever. As long as it's not the ones that are not removable, that's what I do. Then what I do is I use a great, great tool that you can get at Walmart. Okay? Quadruple lot steel wool. It's like super the finest steel wool that, that, that you can buy. All right, and you can literally take a, a jet, an idle, emulsion tube, whatever, so look at that, and I hand clean every single brass piece on that carb. Float seat, uh, even inside of this emulsion tube, all of that gets redone. So it's brand new, shiny, free-flowing jet or tapered needle or pilot screw, whatever is brass will look just as shiny as that will when I'm done with it. And even the inside, take the take this the steel wool, make it super thin, like a little rod, and just run it straight into the motion tube until you can shine the light in there and say, wow, that looks like a freaking mirror finish. That right there is quality work to me. And honestly, it has proven, it, it, it has shown its colors time after time, carb after carb, as far as the, the jetting goes. Now, I do use a a ultrasonic cleaner for carb bodies. I always recommend, always, 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 if you're cleaning the carb, I always recommend soaking it in some kind of warm to hot solution. I don't care what home remedy you find, vinegar, pine saw, camel urine, I don't care. As long as it's warm enough to break up particles with some kind of cleaner, obviously. Even if you use like chem dip, that's, that's okay too. I don't use it, but I've used it before. Um, but soaking the bodies in something is just as important as cleaning the jets. Okay, it's not just a matter of popping the bowls off, spraying it down with contact cleaner, putting the bowl back on, and then and then, I mean I clean the carb out and it's not running right. I hear that all the time, all the freaking time about how people clean their carbs. It's simply just because of a lack of knowledge of going that deep into it. All right or just buying it like a jet kit. And like I put a brand new jet kit in it and it runs like crap. Bogs after idle or won't take the throttle. Okay, Going through the car body once you've soaked it with a healthy contact cleaner. I love compressed air. You may not have access to that, but compressed air is a genius invention. And hitting every orifice that you can possibly visually see on that carb with contact cleaner to make sure that it has a passage 
in and out. It's always going to be a tunnel somewhere if it's a, if it's an open orifice in the carb. Okay, in carbs it, they can only drill in straight lines. Okay, this this is a bunch of information, but carb body they can only drill in straight lines. Okay, so when when, when they drill through the body and it's got to the point where they want it, they'll cap that end off and then drill down so that that has a tunnel somewhere. Everything does. Making sure that all that's clean. Polishing and going through each part like I just showed you is crucial. Same with idle jets. I don't care if you have a 32, 34, uh, 55 idle jet, whatever. Also, one extra bit of information that I wanted to share that I forgot to grab. Give me one sec. For you like home DIY guys who don't want to buy anything, I know you're out there. This is a grill brush or a, a very thick gauge steel brush. Okay. Take one of the hairs. Because when they make these, they just take one long stream and then they will, uh, these needle nose pliers are not strong enough. Anyways, that was a fail attempt. Take this, rip one of these out, and these usually measure out to be around 32 to 35 millimeters. Or, I'm sorry, 0 0.32 to 0 0.35 millimeters. And you can literally use one of these steel things to clean out everything in the carb. I've done it before, when I, when I, when I first started. All right, it's, it's a great way to do it. Put the bit inside of a drill, spin the drill up, and just feed this thing into there, it, it, it's going to work around and scrape the walls inside of that jet. That's enough ranting, but I, I hope that makes sense to you guys. What I use is steel wool, polish every brass piece possible, drill bits, small ones off of Amazon, a micrometer, which is not very expensive. You may not do carburetors like I do, obviously. You're just going to clean them one time and then, and then that's it. What's the point of buying all these tools? You can literally spend maybe 30 bucks on a solid carb cleaning kit like I just showed you and get, do a professional job on your carb. I guarantee it. And like right now, the guys who, who, who have been following me for a while, I'm putting together a bunch of different carb videos, step by step by step, taking them apart completely, even uh, inline fours like the Nighthawk, the 1100s you want to split, the VT twins you want to split, but single carb, dual carbs, inline fours, I'm literally making products for you guys um, that are broken down. And that's the type of stuff that I show you, like literally, like I used to do, like the POV style, boom. So this is like a little taste of what that looks like. It works, and I can honestly say that that's, a lot of people probably would never tell you that. Okay, a lot of the shops that you go to or whatever. So I, I, I hope that that is beneficial for you. Now, let's get into the meat of these conversations, and let's get into some questions that I have from you guys who are subscribers, okay? I try to attend the, my subscriber list only, so if you start blasting me on YouTube with questions, I usually, I have so many questions that I, I, I get through on my email. They are subscribed to me. They say, hey, I want to know more about what you're doing. I cater to them as much as I can. I try to get on YouTube when I can and try to, like, put my two cents in. But if I don't answer you on there, don't get offended. Just head over to the email list or head over to the website, MotorcycleMD.com. There's an Ask MD button at the top navigation bar. And it'll say like YouTube Live Q&A. It helps me organize everything. All right. So my mouth's getting dry already. All that talking. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone who showed up tonight. On a Thursday night, when you're used to the Monday night thing, um, before I even get started, next Monday, this Monday coming up, obviously it's Christmas, I will not be doing a live feed. Um, and then there's some time in January where I'm actually going to Georgia to train at a Honda facility for about, for about a week. Um, and I won't have two live sessions, but I'll let you guys know if you're on the email list, I'll send an email out to you. Plus, it just gives me a break to be able to build more content, like actual videos for YouTube for you guys. This gives me a little bit of a break because Monday's my only free night. So, enough talking, let's go. So, 
First question I got is from Cody, C-O-D-I-E, a little bit different from my name. He's got a CBR1000F. Got 74,000 miles on it. That's ripping, dude, for a sport bike. Usually they're crashing total by that point, to be completely honest with you. He's got some stickers that add horsepower, obviously. Aside from that, it's bone stock. All right. Before I get into this, two things that led me to your channel. One, you're easy to listen to and follow along. Made my carbon cleaning tips a breeze. And number two, we have the same name. I've always hated being called Corey as well, so I feel your pain. Thanks, Cody. That's so weird to say someone else's name. That's my own. Dreaded cam chain noise. I've owned this bike for near three years now. It was my first leader bike. So I, I guess where he's at in Australia, which is awesome, um, they have certain licenses for certain bikes, certain leader bikes. So you have to kind of move your way up. That's a summary of what he, he goes into next. Fast forward three years or so, you notice that when things aren't sounding as they were, and this supposed cam noise is getting louder. On startup, it sounds like a chain being dragged along concrete and being jingled ever so often, exaggeratedly loudness, exaggerated loudness, but accurate. With choke on, it pulsates. That I don't, I'm not really concerned about choke. With moments of being noticeably loud, then drops off to that sweet four pot sound, then back up. Once warmed up, it's not as apparent but if the revs are held at the same place, let's say 2,000, 3,000 RPMs, it will rattle like a tin can with a thousand BBs inside. When I serviced the Honda, when, when I serviced with Honda, I asked about it and they said, should be, all, should, should be right, mate. It won't hurt the bike. I'm butchering <laughs> this accent, let me stop. And, we'll come, and it will come back. <laughs> that was so dumb. And we'll come back if it does get fixed anyways. Just curious as your thoughts. FYI, I try, I, I've trialed using thicker oil, 1550, to quiet it down with no success. We have hot days all year round, so I'm never, ever worried about oil being too thick on startup. I usually use 10W40 synth or whatever synth, semi-synth, like Bike Shop has getting cheap all the time. Um, so what you're going to have to do is first off replace the cam chain tensioner. That's the first thing that you, you have to weed out. It's either going to be loose cam chains, which is very possible it's at, at that kind of mileage, not knowing how the bike was treated, how much they pinged the rev limiter, how low they ran it on oil before you got it, not knowing the health of that cam chain and how the bike was treated, I would start first with cam chain tensioner. We see it a lot on the older F4s, the, CB, the CBR 600 F4s. Um, if you like rip the throttle and the noise will go away for a second and then come right back in, it's because you've taken all of the slack out of that cam chain. All right, so as soon as you rev it up, it puts a, a nice tension on, on that chain and you won't hear it. But as soon as you like let off or as soon as you coming off that, that quick burp of the throttle, it'll rattle again louder than it was before, whatever. So cam chain tensioner is your first bet. Okay, that's the cheapest route. The cam chain tensioner is probably like 75 bucks, but trust me, that's the cheapest route for right now. If that does not work, you more than likely have cam chain slack that cannot be fixed with the tensioner. It's just way too loose, which inevitably is not the best thing. It can throw timing off uh, of the camshafts, it can throw firing, you know, it can start messing with the timing of the motor if it's too bad. Or you can break the cam chain off and then your motor is useless. I'm not going to scare you with that, but again, what I would do, tensioner first, see how it responds. If you want to, um, you can some people like to go to like a manual tensioner and those can be a little bit tricky because you are providing the force with your own hand rather than a spring system that is designed for that motorcycle. But they still work. Don't get me wrong. I've seen people run them on CRFs all the time. 
So a manual, a manual tensioner would be just a, a way that you can apply tension to that cam chain, lock it down, run the bike, see how it sounds. You can kind of mess with the tension while it's running. Obviously, you want to add some tension to it before you start it up, and you don't want it to be too tight. Okay, so what you want to do is put some tension on it, start the bike up, let it run, loosen it up, and kind of move it with your hand. It's probably in a really awkward spot that you can't even move with your hand, but stay with me. And you can kind of mess with it and hear that chain rattle and loosen up a little bit, and then you can tighten it a little bit more until the point where you say, okay, that noise just went away. That's where I'll leave it at. That would be my suggestion if you do move to a manual style of tensioner. But anyways, 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 replace the tensioner first, see how that responds. Okay, you, if you don't want to do the manual thing, you, can, you might have to go into the motor and take the cam chain out and do all that jazz, which at that point, at 70, almost 75,000 miles, you may love the bike, but it might be time for a, a new bike. Honestly, it might not be worth it. Um, so that's that. Moving on up. Moving on down, actually. Alice thought, let me get some water. Hope you guys are having a good time. Listen to me just talk. What's going on, Leonard? Alistar Co Cocaine? Alistar Cocaine. Co I don't know. I might, I might be messing that up. Sorry, man. From South Africa. A 93 Honda Shadow VT1100C. 24,000 miles, it's got an open exhaust, the rest is all stock. I've been hitting up a lot of South African people, man, that's pretty tight. Who, who would have freaking thought that I would get? Anyways. Hey man, thanks for an amazing channel and content. Love the videos, thank you. I have a hydraulic clutch. I did bleed the line twice now. There are no bubbles in the line but the clutch still catches or starts to move the bike at different locations on the handle. Sometimes there is no clutch and when I put on, when I put on gear the bike moves without releasing the clutch at all. Please help, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> Alright, so um, you got you got three things. One, that top master cylinder, which you've bled and cleaned and you, you probably looks great up top where your handle is. Second thing would be a slave cylinder. Okay, I actually have a video on my channel. It's rebuilding a slave cylinder. It's long. It may be boring, but it's helped tons and tons of people out. Maybe not tons. It's helped hundreds of people out. Okay, um, and that's where I would go first. Slave cylinder. They are very, very common to go bad. Um, watch the video. It will help you out. I guarantee it. It's pretty much the same thing. It may not be located in the same area, but if it's a Honda, I can guarantee you it's going to be pretty darn close to what you're doing. What you may see, what you may be dealing with, that's where I would start. That would be the, the cheaper fix. Third thing would be your clutch is smoked. Okay? Or it could be a combination of both clutch may be smoked, I mean just smoked. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. The best thing to do to know that is to, if you can get the clutch to work, shift it in fifth gear and just throttle that thing. Just, I mean, just wide open, fifth gear, at like a 30 roll and see if the RPMs shoot up. That will let you know if your clutch is slipping or not. Um, so check the slave cylinder first, video here on the channel, check it out, it'll help you out or you might need a new clutch. New clutch discs, new clutch steel plates, might even need new springs if it's too far smoked. All right, three things. Top master cylinder, slave cylinder, clutch assembly. Okay, S moving on down. Craig Bellamy from Winchester. He's got a Kawasaki KZ750. It's a 79, so it's like the, it was when Kawasaki was trying to be like Honda. Just say that. Just kidding. Just kidding. Cool bike. 
29,000 miles, mods, nothing. Just a question, really. How often do you recommend lubing your chain? One place I read says 200 miles. That seems like a pretty short interval, but hey, what do I know? Um, so on the, on the older bikes, 70s, 70s bikes, maybe not 80s, but most 70s bikes, they use standard style chains, okay? The standard chains are non-o-ring, metal-on-metal, wearing son of a bees. All right, they wear out quick, very quick. I even asked my, my boss, my mentor, has been here since 68, okay? So he was here when all those 750s were brand freaking new coming out of the box. I asked him, did you guys ever do any like crazy motor work on 750s? He said, no, we replaced cases when chains broke because of those standard chains not lasting very long. He's been to here to Cali on, four, on CB450s a couple times. He put a brand new chain on, three states in, the chain was slap gone. I mean, was worn out, just drooping, done. So on standard chains, yes, I would see every 200 miles being what it takes, honestly. I would recommend, if you haven't already, upgrading to a newer style o-ring chain x-ring whatever it is as long as it's not standard and it's a o-ring style chain that's what i would do i put that on my cl450 i'll be putting it on my cb3 on my cl350 um it's just the best most modern positive change you can make to that bike potentially new sprockets too depending on how, how worn out they are if you have a modern style chain o-ring chain I would recommend every 500 miles, okay? And it's literally as simple as filling up your gas tank, cool, reach down, touch the chain. Is there grease on my hand or any kind of lubrication? No, there's not. It's probably because it's dry. Time to lubricate it, okay? One good rule of thumb, literally, is that most chain slacks require at least an inch of chain movement from the bike's resting position. Well, if you guys ever knew, but from here to here is about an inch. So if you, where your chain's resting at, if you move your chain, like let's say here's the chain's riding like this, I move the chain up and that, and that top part of the chain, this is the chain, by the way, pay attention. If I move it up, that's an inch of free play. Some are like an inch and three, three, I don't know inch and, I don't know, an um, inch and more, um, but that's a good rule of thumb. If you're like, whap, 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 and the chain's just flopping around, obviously it's time to go, but 500 miles is safe. That's what I do. 500 miles is a good time to check it. That's about three full gas tanks on most bikes, maybe a little less, um, and it's time. That's some miles. That's, yeah, okay? Hope, hope that helps you out. Moving on down. I got two more, and then uh, I'll open the floor up to you guys and uh, read some of the questions that you guys may have. Okay. Um, Daniel from Orange County, California, 1982 Yamaha XJ650. It's actually a beautiful motor. I don't work on them, but I've worked on one, and I was really taken back by how cool that motor is. Anyways. No mods. It's been sitting since I purchased it last year. I don't think, what's going on, Zeke? Why are you sleeping, man? I've been sitting since, it's been sitting since I purchased it last year. I don't think it's seen the road for a past decade. I worked on it and had it running for three minutes, added a new four to one exhaust and pods as well. So you do got mods, bro. You said you got none yet. Added a four to one exhaust and pods as well. It ran for three minutes, then I killed it. Nothing seems to be wrong, just need a lot of tuning on the carbs, which is given. Do you think it would be best for me to dismantle the motor and rebuild clean the insides? No. 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 That's, no. I don't think so at all. There, 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 are, there are retired guys who spend their every waking hour buying old motors and just tearing it down for the fun of it. That's awesome. 
I love writing. I do. And I, I imagine you do too. Um, and if there's, there's more than likely nothing wrong with the motor because it's probably had oil in it and it's been lubricated. If it's been sitting outside with no spark plugs and the valve cover off, just acting like a freaking bird feeder, then yeah, I would say it's time to, re to rebuild the motor because it probably wouldn't run anyways, but it did run. So it's got some kind of compression in it. Okay, so no, I, I, I would not rebuild the motor. I would not go through the, that task quite yet. Um, not until you actually have a problem. Don't, if it ain't fixed, don't broke it. Wow. If it ain't broke, don't fix it would be the better way to say that. If it's smoking or if it's got weak compression in the cylinder or whatever. But no, uh, I resurrected a CL450 that's been sitting since 79 out of a moldy freaking garage. It was roach, man. I mean, I was, I was totally prepared to pull that motor out. Cause I was like, man, those rings are probably freaking locked up. Everything's rusted. Bro, I rode that thing. I've been riding it every day since I got it started in two weeks. It's been about two months now, or you know, probably longer than that, probably about four months now. Okay, so it's fine, dude. It's not a Honda, but I would ride it. Get it running and ride it. That's what you're supposed to do. Frank Kissler from South Africa, again. He's got an awesome bike. He's got a 98 Honda Africa Twin. Relic. I mean, that thing is a, that is a really, really cool bike. In the, in the 90s when they had that Africa Twin out or when they had the, the um, what, what was that other one they had? They had the, uh, what is it called? It's called the um, Twin uh, Honda. It's called, I can't remember. It was an onward offered bike that they had for like a couple of years. I always forget the name. Anyways, anyways, sorry. Hi, Cody. I have a beautiful XRV 750 in the HRC colors. Even cooler. I changed the rings two months ago. I imagine that that's the uh, cylinder piston rings. I enjoy the carb balancing tips. Awesome. Here's my question. The clutch basket has a rattle when the clutch is not engaged. As soon as I engage the clutch, it gets quiet. Is there a fix for that, or does it have to be replaced? It does run. It runs like that either way. I just like a quiet motor. Thanks, Frank. Um, those, those motors were kind of noisy, man. Um, but we don't work on them very much. They're very, very rare, especially in the States. All right, so I, I can honestly say that I have not ever been into that motor. All right, but what I can give you are experiences that I've had with other bikes with the same issue and bikes that came with that issue, okay? If you look at the, um, the R, R, RT, RCV or RV, whatever it is, the V4 sport bike, those were noisy motors. Um, the XR650L, noisy motor. Um, but with the CBR, uh, 1000, I think a, a very certain year, 1000 RR and 600, it had the clutch rattle. All right, and there was a recall on it for five years. Uh, I did tons of those motors, and you had to replace the crankshaft. The reason why was because of a mismachined fixed gear on the end of the crankshaft. So on your clutch basket, okay, you typically have like a, a gear on the back that has like maybe some springs to help with cushioning, but it's like a, a gear on the back of it. And uh, I'm trying to see if I have one. I don't. And that mates directly, usually correct, directly to the crankshaft. And those gears mating made a chatter noise. All right. And um, what you would do to, to figure out if that's what it was is you would sh pull the clutch in, shift it in the gear, and then holding the front brake, you would let the clutch out and put like a load on that clutch. And the noise would just disappear completely. As soon as you let it off, it 
you apply it, and then it, it, it would just completely go away. Honda's fix for that was buying a new crankshaft. I don't think that that's your problem, but that's just what I've experienced with a noise kind of similar to yours. Some chatter that, that you can get um, on the clutch basket itself. Okay, so you have your clutch basket that works like a basket. And in these little fins, you have your clutch plates that sit and ride in between this little hole in the middle. Okay, and where these clutch sit, they vibrate all the time on this basket. And they can actually dig grooves into the basket, okay, into like the basket's fingers, I, I, I would call it. So you, your disc, my head is the discs. That makes sense? No, it doesn't. Okay. So the friction discs, all that stuff, they're always chattering until you apply the clutch and all of a sudden it all kind of locks in and gives you drive. But in, the, in that chattering, they can, if you ever took the clutch off, look at those fins and see if you have deep, like, wave-like grooves. And that can cause chattering as well. That's my... It's not really an answer. I mean, it's just what I've experienced, really. Um, I wouldn't consider it to be a major problem. Like I said, those motors were kind of noisy. Just like the 650L is, just like the 250L is, all that stuff. Okay, so that's what I got for you, man. I wouldn't be too concerned about it. If you want to go in after the clutch and just look around, that's what I would look for on the clutch hub itself. All right? Um, and it may not fix the problem. I'm not saying that that's, that's your cure, but that's what I've seen be a problem on noisy clutches. Okay? So... Let's see what you guys have written as far as questions go. So if I can't, there'll, there'll be some long pauses as I kind of read through this, but we'll see what we got. Any questions? I hope you guys have a great Christmas, man. Great. I'm super pumped about 2018, man. I'm going to be doing some webinar stuff with you guys, getting some select people in on that. I'm pumped, dude. I'm super pumped. Hopefully, I'll, I'll, I'll be buying a house maybe. Um, cool stuff. I, I, I hope you guys are pumped for it. I hope you guys have a great Christmas, but let's get into some questions. So, motor got running, which is way too rich. Let me drill it. Lee Edwards, I had a guy bring a 1972 CB350 twin and after putting rings in his motor and got it running, it was it was running way too rich. And he told us he drilled out the jets. Why do people try to drill out drill jets? Try to drill jets. It's probably because of lack of knowledge, and they have read online somewhere that if you add more fuel, your bike will automatically respond great and um, run. 20 horsepower more. I don't know. Um, I read drill jets when I'm jetting a carb for a specific purpose. Aftermarket exhaust, actually not usually aftermarket exhaust, but like an extreme difference, like pod filter or something like that. Okay? Um, but that's usually why. Lack of knowledge, I don't know. They are taking shortcuts with something that they know nothing about. Very well said, Zip. I do use camel urine. <laughs> Wombat Moto, you got to toss a leg of that 350 yet? How comfortable are the ape hangers? <laughs> Dude, that, that thing is down to, to the frame, actually. Um, I, I was here late one night, and I was like, this thing is hideous. Um, Zip, I'm going to get to you, brother. I Wait, who is that? I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, I have a box right beside me. Let's see. Y'all want to see everything that goes on a 350? Give me it. The motor's out. It's literally just a rolling chassis. 
This is everything that goes on the frame of a CB350, CL350. Harness, electrical, everything. It's down in the frame, literally. Forks and tires is all that's on it, because I mean, I'm going to paint the frame. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot, man. There, there, there's a lot going on with that bike. Rat, rats got into the harness. Carbs are just slammed stuck, like someone welded the throttle, the throttle plate stuck. Um, but I'm getting ready to paint, um, sandblast the frame, and I'm trying to decide on a cool color that I want to do the frame in. Um, so, I've thrown a leg over it, but now it has XR uh, 125 bars on it, scrambler bars. So, moving on. Leonard and Granger, I wish I knew half of what you forgot. <laughs> You're awesome, man. The show is too good, thanks. After putting Dean Fairley, hey, show is too good, thanks. After putting a 4 in 1 exhaust on my 750 along with new pods, etc., it runs, but it runs a little rough. There is a noise which sounds like tapping coming from the engine. Is this likely to to be I haven't tightened one of the headers of the exhaust. Yeah, absolutely. That could totally be it. Um, also, crazy simple question. Does the main stand on the 750-92 bounce around when it's in the up position? Mine seems loose and might need a new spring. It took, I took it off as didn't want it to scrape. Yeah, um, so th that's a, a very loaded question, but I'll try to help out. Um, I imagine that you went you went to uh, pods. So you did some stuff with the um, crank ventilation system on on the bike. That can be noisy. Um, you need to get the bike running and hot and like ride it around um, and get some fresh oil in that thing. Some good quality oil, Honda oil, whatever you want to use. As long as it, as it, it, it doesn't say buy one get one free, 7-Eleven, 10W30 on it, then use it. Um, and some, just really get some good oil in that and make sure that it's not like a valve tap it noise. Because um, the uh, 750 is on the 92, so you, you have a Nighthawk. Um, they have an HVA system, so it's nothing that you can adjust. It's, um, they automatically adjust, so you need to get some fresh oil. The center stand, um, it was probably loose because someone, whoever you bought it from or whatever, left it up in the center stand position for you know a very long time and it stretched the spring out same thing on my cl 450 it was on the stand in the stand for over 20 years on the center stand position that thing flops like you've never seen okay so yeah a new spring would probably help that out um can you help me how to adjust front suspension that's I have a CD100 going to make a cafe racer and problem is exhaust is pop. I'm sorry, man. That's, um, I don't know what, what you want me to tell you on that. You have to be a little bit more specific on how to, on what, what you mean by, by adjusting. Um, I'm giving away three iPhones, eight to my last few subscribers. You have a chance to win. Yay. Um, you guys are just having some straight up conversations in here, aren't you? Dude, leave. Start MMI in March? Dude, right on, man. That's awesome. Dude, that's awesome. That's where I went. Um, great, great school. I don't know what it's like now, but it was, it was a fantastic school. Um, go in there as if you know nothing. That's my advice. As if you know nothing. And uh, you will learn. And in Orlando, that dude, that's exactly where I went. I was in Orlando for two and a half years, bro. So that, that's awesome, man. Um, I'm super pumped for you for doing that. You're, you're going to learn tons. Dude, ask a million questions. A million. And never stop. 
pick everybody's brains, pick your instructor's brains, do it the whole time, and you're going to learn a tremendous amount of information. So congratulations on getting accepted into the MMI. That's really awesome. Um, let's see. I have a 78 Honda Matic. Mm, cool bike. Cool bike. If they're, dude, the 78, the 750 automatic, when they're running, like, you know. They, like, they run super smooth when they're in good condition. Um, Space Rider, I'm, I'm rebuilding an 81 Suzuki 550 from the ground up. I've done my own wiring and wondering if it's a good idea for an on-off button on the headlight so it's off during startup to help the battery. I think that's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. All new bikes cut the headlight and the starter button when starting the bike up. All new bikes. Okay, it just adds more power to those coils for it to start up. So, Great, great question. I would definitely get an on-off switch. Maybe like a three-way switch, so you have off, low beam, high beam, obviously. Um, great idea. Am I missing something? Uh, I don't know. If, if I don't get to your question on here, man, just shoot me an email. Jason asks why his carbs leak. Jason, 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 Jason. Oh, the Hunomatic guy. I'm sorry, man. I didn't... I'm sorry. Um, I have a 78 Hunomatic 750. Carbs will not stop leaking. Um... First thing is you got to find out where it's leaking from. So Honda Matic's got four carbs. You got pipes that run in between all of them. Those have a tendency of going bad, and they'll leak in between the carbs. So you got to clean the carbs all off, all right, and really, really flashlight in hand, pinpoint where the carbs are leaking from. If it's leaking out of the overflow tube on the carb, or if it's leaking out of the uh, bowl gasket around the carb, if it's leaking from the middle of the carb, and making it seem like it's leaking from the bottom, but it's really it's coming up from higher up. All of that matters. Okay, all that matters, because you got three different size jobs. You got a carb split, huge job on the 80s bikes. You got bowl gaskets, somewhat easy, just pull them, replace them. And you got number three, which is pull them, check float height, check float needles, check float seat, put it back in. So you, you really need to, uh, to figure out where it's leaking from. That's my because I see carb leaks all the time, but it's just, you really just don't know um, until you do it. Lee Edwards, did you go to MMI just for Honda? Yes. Mm -hmm. I've been a Honda guy ever since I was working on cars. Um, I actually was signed up for late model Harley and Kawasaki, and then I met my gorgeous wife, and um, I finished Honda at the highest that I could, and I said, that's, that's, that's enough. And I saved myself seventeen thousand dollars, and came home and worked from home or from where I lived. So yeah, only Honda is what I did. It was the longest course, twenty-four weeks. Um, and honestly, when it comes to, to metric bikes, it's pretty much all the same. Um, they just find a different way to do something that's been redundant for years, and they put a different name on it. I, th I think Honda is far superior in certain ways to other brands, but to be honest with you, nobody, all of the brands, no one's making bad motorcycles anymore. They're all pretty awesome bikes. They're all great engineering compared to what they used to be. So, uh, let's see, well, how long have we been doing this? Holy crap, we've been almost doing this for, a, for an hour. This is the longest one. Dang it. My dog's passed out. All right, last one. Big Boigas. Big Boigas's. Hey, Cody. Love the show. Keep it up. I have a 79 Yamaha XS750 that needs a new base gasket leaking oil. Since I have the top end off, should I go ahead and replace the rings and relap the valves? Um, I mean, dude, it's an old motor. 
I don't. I mean, if you know how to do that, lapping valves can be a very, very great technique. Um, but yes, if you, if you have the if you have the top end off and you and you're gonna pull the head, you gotta replace that cylinder gasket anyway. So replace all of them all the way up. Um, new rings will never hurt if you have the ability to do some kind of cross hatch in the cylinder, like um, like a nice hone. Um, look up cylinder hones on Amazon. You'll find something that you can just put in your drill and just watch some videos on YouTube on, on, on how to hone cylinders. That's a great idea to help seat those new rings. Um, but what you can do with lapping valves to see if you even need to, um, I'm, I'm going to try to make this quick. So you, you have a valve, right, and it goes on its seat. So what you can do is take the valve off and mark it with like magic marker all around the tulip lip part of the valve that seats and then put your thumb on it and rub that valve in that seat take it back off and see where it's wearing at on the actual angle of the valve okay because where it is angled at will determine how bad the head is how bad the valve is um, Usually I, I only lap valves when I put brand new ones in old heads, and I'll leave it at that. It's, I don't relap with old valves. I always relap with new valves on older heads. On new systems, they don't want you lapping nothing, okay, because they're all coated with some crazy high-end stuff. Um, now, one more thing. Zip, Zip's been emailing me about his bike. One thing that I, I wanted to... Um, suggest for you he's having a, an electrical problem on a old twin star um, with a tail light issue um, honestly bro I have a manual for the twin star 81 a 185 and a 200 T I, I have two I cannot find a single wiring diagram for that 185 blows my mind I mean they are factory hunter manuals no wiring diagram but I have wiring diagrams for the 200 to the 200 T um, so, what I would suggest, take your, if I can remember correctly, take your brown and white wire and hook it into a spare black terminal, okay, because that would power the brown with white wire and help the tail light. Now, when you turn your key into the park position, all of your lights may come on, so it's not a full fix for what you're trying to do, but if you want tail light, Brown with white into the black. I, there's something going on with the ignition to me, or like you were saying, the harness. But f the black should have power with the key on. If you feed the brown with white, that should power the taillight system. That might be random to a lot of you guys, but zip. Hopefully you understand that. Um, and we'll leave it at that. If you want to email me, brother, I'll, 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 I'll be happy to, to, to dive in more. But... It's been an hour. I was super pumped to, for, for this live feed specifically. I want to show you guys that carb stuff. So thank you everyone for hanging out this long. I mean, I've crushed an hour of your time. Your wives are probably killing you guys. Um, but thank you for hanging out. Thank you for talking motorcycles with me. Again, my name is Cody Richards. I have a website, MotorcycleMD.com. You can follow me on Instagram, the MotorcycleMD, Facebook as well. Um, I have a bunch of bunch of cool stuff coming out this year, and I'm super excited to present it to you guys. So become a subscriber on the email list, man. We 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 can be in touch. I can send you guys update videos. I post a lot of crazy pictures on Instagram that I find at the shop every day, um, and we can become friends. All right. So what else do I have to say? Have a merry Christmas and a happy New Year. I know I will. It's going to be super stressful, but that's what's Christmas without it being stressful. I have to travel to like three different houses. But um, I got t-shirts. Go to the website. I have a couple left. In, I, I, I have way more left in the gray and black than I do in the black with white. People just freaking ate those things up. Um, they're awesome. Uh, you can support me that way. A lot of people have been donating, which is just killer. I'm, I'm just super blessed and blown away by the fact that how many people support Motorcycle MD. So shout out to um, For the Bold again. Thank you for pronouncing my channel as the top channel to look for in 2018. That was super 
super awesome, and I'm humbled to be on that list. You guys have a fantastic night. I feel like I'm forgetting something. There's always so much information I have to like vomit out at the end, but you guys are awesome. Um, and uh, I'm tired. I'll see you guys very soon. Hopefully I'll have a fresh video out for you guys sometime this week. Again, next Monday, no live. I'll be with my family, eating food, opening up cool gifts. Hope you're doing the same. Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys quality tips and tricks on your next build and your daily rider. Y'all have a very Merry Christmas, and I'll see you guys. I'll post an email about when I'll be on live next. All right? Good night. Later.